ladies and gentlemen like welcome to this video and as i was browsing i saw this um great video million millionaires versus minimum wage did you earn your money and i was so fascinated by you know the points made the, the the i've been following benjamin graham for a very long time and you know i absolutely love his content and he inspired me also to start this channel and bro you're gonna learn a lot from this and you know i'm gonna give my own point of view and from there we can move on okay let's get straight let's dive let's swim into the video okay cool what did i do when i started making money i went and bought boobs it's like that's what i wanted you're gonna Dang. die from your implants like i'll die a d cup damn bro oh this shit starts so savagely like that you brought millionaires and minimum wage workers together to spark a dialogue about their similarities and differences okay Hi, my okay. name is Tim. I'm a community organizer here in LA. I work on environmental justice, social justice, housing justice, and uh, incarceral state issues. My name is Christiana Hurt. I'm the owner of the seven-figure brand Wealthy College Kid. I'm 24 years old. My name is Graham. I'm a real estate agent, real estate investor, and YouTuber. Uh, my name is Beatrice. I am 21, and I am a Target worker. My name is Brett Knutson. I am an entrepreneur and an investor. My name is Tierra Lucky, and I am a minimum wage worker. I just like. Like, see, for example, I don't know, but when I just watched the video, like, if maybe you put all of them, I can switch the millionaires from the minimum wage. I don't know why, but you know, <laughs> no, offended. <laughs> also, do Instacart, and I'm also an actress. <laughs> You know, since lazy, the brain have we shall watch the ads. The first prompt is not good at editing. I worked for everything I earned. Mm. Okay. But, but so, so I grew up with two parents that were basically paycheck to paycheck, and none of them had any extra money. It was by seeing my parents struggle like that that I really realized the value of money. So I basically poured everything I had into my work. There were years, I would say four years, that I didn't have any friends. From 18 to 22, it was just me. And I was working from probably 8 a.m. until midnight, uh, working as a real estate agent. I completely agree. I think that what a lot of people discount is all it's the all sacrifices, sacrifices that are made. That I didn't go to parties. I don't really honestly have like a ton of friends. And it's not like a sacrifice where I was like, I'm gonna have no friends, but you can only balance so many plates or you drop everything. And the plate that I chose to- Wow, that's a good point, man. Like having friends, you know, if your net worth, if your network doesn't increase your net worth, then you should change, uh, you should change your friends eh? i think um this is a very important point you know um and i believe i'm also gonna learn a lot from it you know friends are I, I, an important factor to your world that's why sometimes um it's always said you know you should struggle to leave your hometown and move to a place where you'll be motivated to work and yeah wow so uh, to give up was a social life. Social life, giving up social life, yeah. There's a lot of labor and communal effort that goes into getting all of us here that we don't get paid for, that other people don't get paid for. And the examples that you two gave are perfect, actually. You both earn your money by extracting value from capital transactions. You know, you are not building the house yourself. You're not out there working like in a slave mine, pulling selenium out of the earth like some people on this planet are. And we have to re-understand what it means to earn money and how we all interact to do that. How, how would you address base up extracting value if you start a company from the ground and then you build it into a multi-million dollar company? Mm. But no one does that because there's investors and stuff that come in too. Not always. Most of the time. I mean, you have to I mean, get I've, capital I've, I've raised, I have yeah. raised money before, yeah. but I've also started companies that I didn't raise money for. How would you find them? By working a part-time retail job for minimum wage and then saving up and then putting it in. I think that's a good point because, you know, 
the main goal is to invest, you know, invest in assets, try to work your way up, make more money for yourself and, you know, use the little you have, you invest. Okay, if maybe you have a minimum wage job, $2,000 or $3,000 a month, if you've paid your house rents, and as long as you can eat, you know, whatever change you have, you know, struggle to, if you're not saving, if you're always struggle to invest here. I have felt judged for my income level. I think it's part of general society. We are always judging each other. Having used SNAP points before, like standing in a grocery store, using the card that I've gotten for the government to pay for food, and feeling the people behind me thinking that's something that you haven't earned or gotten. Has somebody ever asked you to use your SNAP on them? I mean, I have. Um, generally, there's not that much to go around. It's the same mentality when it's a dollar versus SNAP. Somebody could still ask me to share. Well, you get it. Why can't you help me out? I didn't step forward because me personally, I surround myself with people that just like, what's in my bank account just doesn't matter to the people that are around me. I do think a lot of judgment towards how much you make reflects on like your dating experience. That I, I do feel. <laughs> See, I've never had that because I'm no? so frugal. If there are girls that are out there who want me for my money, mm -hmm. like they should know I'm probably like the cheapest person out there. I, I literally will wait like 9 p.m. for happy hour to start just so I get the happy hour menu. And so, like, so I would be like, I would be like the last person any sort of like gold digger would want. Yeah. <laughs> I find myself in situations with these boys that have no job, no nothing, and I end up taking on these charity cases of yeah. relationships. Oh, why don't you put him on or build him up? And I was like, you can't build. Yeah, it's not build a bear. Build. <laughs> I mean, you can. I, I, I mean, I've yeah. met guys I've dated that you know go on to have successful businesses from my input. You know, you want to date somebody equal or greater, but then you don't want to be materialistic about like, well, I only date people with money because I make money. Showing up on the first page of Google might yeah. not be the best. Gonna watch the ads. Anyone can become rich if you work hard enough. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, 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 okay. So I just this is quite a co yeah, you know. If work had enough, but there are certain things, you know, the wrong investment, you poor, dealing with thieves, bad intention people, you know, a sickness, an accident, you know, it, there's always uncertainty. But we never hope for the worst, but you know, yeah, okay, let's 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 let let me get what what I'm gonna say. that anyone could become rich if they actually like believed in themselves and took the risk okay. to actually believe in themselves that there is some success at the end of the line of that. I feel like a lot of it comes down to mindset first and really having the belief that you can do that. I know for me, one of my biggest concerns was I didn't have any skills whatsoever and I didn't get into college. I have like a 2.0 GPA in high school. Like it was terrible. That's, I had such bad it. grades, but I really turned that. It's as if that's the, 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 the criteria to be a millionaire right now. Having 2.1 GPA, having a, the, I don't know, you know, it's, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> into a positive and I really believe this actually happened for a yeah. reason because Sunny now I could pursue something else which is real important. estate because I didn't require a college degree and looking back now that was the best thing that had ever happened that's like a really sticky situation with anyone can become like rich because I don't think that's completely true a lot of people can if they have like connections and stuff you know but I feel like sometimes people like they work two jobs or sometimes they have other things going on they have to pay their needs first they don't always have like money for that you know because like my dad he's like a landscape worker he has tried making his own company and it doesn't always like work out he has tried hard 
it doesn't work. That's, That's why I think it's like, like you have to have connects, connects, you know? That's why. Do, do you well, mind if I interject? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah in, in terms of building connections, I didn't have any connections either when it comes to, you know, working in real estate. And what I did to make the connections is I went to open houses every single Sunday for months. And I probably met at least 50 or 60 real estate agents. And it was through that that I met one agent who was really gracious enough to say, if you want to come uh, work underneath me, I'm happy to do that. And it was really that connection, which you, you yeah. know, like you mentioned, connection, that I met that person through just really kind of putting myself out there to meet people. There's a lot of institutional and systemic barriers that we aren't really talking about. If you walk into like a Beverly Hills $5 million house not speaking English, they're probably not going to give you the like hookup. We don't tend to move within circles where those connections cross economic and socioeconomic lines. But even beyond that, I want to say like you took a big risk and your risk paid off. But what if your risk hadn't paid off? And that's for a lot of people who do try and start their own business or try and start their own YouTube channel. That risk doesn't pay off and there's no real safety net there. So we're not really getting an adequate side of people who have like taken that entrepreneurial risk and not been able to take it again. I'm almost worried it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy though. If you go in it fearing, oh, what am I gonna fail? And that becomes okay. your main focus. I think more people are less likely to take risks actually needed to succeed. That's because my more guy, man. That's failing. been jumping that for like, yeah. I think wild, your beliefs wild with create him, the level of action yeah, you take and the level of action saying. you take determines your results and it is cyclical. I am not obligated to give to the less fortunate. Mm, let me see. Ah, bam, bam, bam. Uh, so Bang. the reason I stood up on this one is I actually, one of the missions in my organizing is getting away from this kind of notion that we have that charity or philanthropy is the way in which we solve social problems. At the same time, like, I still give people money when I have extra change in my pocket, so I don't want to seem like I'm totally opposed to it. I agree with that. I've given people money and not gotten it back. I've given people money and they've wasted it on drugs. Why did I even give you the money to begin with if you weren't going to use it to better yourself? Is it my job to make sure that you're not going hungry? No, we have plenty of, you know, organizations okay. that will make sure that you're eating, make sure that you have a roof over your head. Yeah. It doesn't okay. have to fall on my shoulders, per se. Mm. I feel like when you say, are you obligated to give to the unfortunate, it's always the mindset of, like, money. Well, guess what? I have no money currently to give. Um, but I have, like, my morality. I have my goodness about me, you know? I, I'm just... Dang trying to I love build this a point. I love this point. When you have a group of people that is creative and supportive, you, you build faster than just by yourself. I, I don't always donate with money. Sometimes I'll go and I'll fill bags of mm -hmm. food for kids that are starving. You know what I mean? So yeah. it doesn't always have love to be that. money. Like, I don't think it's our responsibility to give money uh, based off of what we think the person's going to do with it. Like, that's on them if they choose to use it wrongly. It's our responsibility just to be generous. Hey everyone, I'm Shane Murphy, and yeah, today we'll sorry, talk about sorry, how to blah, blah, your blah, blah. business. Yep. Okay, First, cool. I am not afraid to spoil myself. Mm. I personally <laughs> do spoil myself. I work hard to be able to go into a store and get something for myself. I bought a four thousand dollar hairless cat that I had genetically made and when I was in high school. When I started making money, I went and got that cat. You know, when you're in middle school and everybody's hitting puberty and getting taller and boobs, and I didn't get any boobs. What did I do when I started making money? I went and bought boobs. Like, that's what I wanted. And you know, there's the controversy of like, you're gonna die from your implants. Like, I'll die a D cup and I have no problem with it. Damn. Damn. So, yeah. I rarely ever treat myself. I basically keep my spending the same as when I was like, you know, 19 or 21. No, no matter how much money I make, I spend the exact same amount. For instance, this sounds crazy, uh, but when I was like 17, I wanted a Lamborghini. And there was nothing I wanted more. I want to be that guy, 18 years old and pull up with a Lambo. Like, that was my dream. But when I actually got the money to go and buy the car, all of a sudden, I realized, like, wait a second, that's stupid. I'm not going to get the car. I'm, I'm going to invest it in real estate instead. But then I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to get the Lamborghini. And then you save up even more, and then you realize, wait, Lambo is still stupid. Let me go and, you know, invest it. And even now, like, the chase and ambition of getting something is way more fun and enjoyable than actually getting that thing. Hmm. I don't really spoil myself because I always buy my needs first. I usually wait till like my next check to see if I have extra money and if I do then I spoil myself. But if I don't then I just, I don't. 
I think it's interesting also that almost all of us have associated spoiling ourselves with spending money. And at yes, the same time, said spending that money is very unfulfilling. It's weird because even myself, like, I really just like having an F off day and I just hang out and don't do anything and have any responsibilities. But I don't think about it as spoiling myself, even though that's my favorite time to spend. I wish I had more money. Okay. okay. <laughs> Whoa. For me, I think it's always a comfort thing, knowing that I have a little bit more saved up or invested. And I think it could just be a psychological thing that no matter how much money I have, it's always psychologically never going to be enough because that becomes your new normal. So I think you're always chasing that. See, I want more money so that I can pay off like my debt and then travel. Yeah. Like help help some family members and that's it. That's why I mean that's why I want money. I mean I don't want to be like oh give me money you know but like I just want it for my needs you know or just for like a car because I need a car you know or just stuff my family needs stuff my friends need. I think for me if I'm honest with myself it's getting further away from how broke I was because I'm scared of that ever happening again. There is no end because of that. Okay, let me see this uh, guy. So, so, of course, everyone, everyone can always use more money. Like, I've met billionaires who could definitely say that they would want more money. But more, money. I want to see a society in which the money that we have doesn't determine all of our possibilities. Because it seems like when we talk about solving problems, it comes back to money. My utopian vision is like a, a society where money really doesn't matter because we don't really need it to figure out value. But it makes a good translation for the time being. Wow. I love this. I love this. I love this program. I love this program. Like, Thanks so much for watching this episode. Like, if you bring me there when I'm finishing, bro. If I was broke, man, I'm going to meet you who is a millionaire, bro. You, you, you have to employ me. You have to do something, bro. Like, I'm near Graham, bro. You got to teach me some real estate deals, man. Like, give me a tip on real estate, bro. Do something for me, man. Like, we're, we're sitting together, bro. You know. Please, um, you know, speaking of millionaires and minimum wage, I've got a program for you guys in the link in my bio. It can help you better your financial situation. Uh, okay, without further ado, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Bye.